Hi, my name is Lavinia. This is Peter. Welcome to Games Made Easy, a channel to learn board games quickly and easily. Today, for Theodore's birthday, I want to show you the components and how to set up Merchants and Marauders, one of my favorite pirate games. If you want to learn how to play, watch the second part of the video. What I love in Merchants and Marauders is how many ways there are to win. You can be a bloodthirsty pirate or a rich merchant only interested in gold and still compete for first place. Or you can alternate between a peaceful merchant or a sneaky pirate depending on what fits your game, which is really cool. If you're new to the channel, don't forget to subscribe. In Merchants and Marauders, two to four captains decide to go on an adventure. They take command of their ship and they set sail from their hometown in the Caribbean as traders of bananas, sugar, rum, cocoa. En route, they will find fortune and glory either through trade, plunder, battle, exploration, believing in crazy stories or completing heroic missions. Their ships will grow with their fame and fortune. Players try to make a name for themselves from Nassau to Trinidad, whether as an influential merchant or a dreaded pirate, only one player can gain eternal glory. Once a player reaches 10 glory points, the game ends. Merchants and Marauders is not complicated, but it does have a lot of components. Let's have a look at these components as we set up the game, starting with the main board. The main board is divided into 17 sea zones. In the middle is the empty sea zone of the Caribbean Sea. All around are 16 sea zones, each with their own port. Each port belongs to one of the four nations in the game, Dutch, English, French or Spanish, and has a unique advantage or disadvantage. This is where you move all the ships in the game. There are 26 plastic ships, sloops, flutes, frigates, galleons and man of war. They are managed either by players or by non-playing captains, NPCs. Each player also has a player board to keep track of their ship, its upgrades and special weapons, the captain, the crew, the gold and cargo, as well as ongoing rumors and missions. Each player also receives a treasure chest to safely stash gold. There are also 10 custom dice, which have a skull icon instead of the five and the six. These are used for all roles during the game. Rolls are successful if you have at least one skull. Now that we've seen most of the components, let's set up starting with the player board. Each player gets one player board and we select a captain. Randomly draw one of the 16 unique captains that are full per nationality. They each have their own unique abilities and invite a wide range of play styles depending on how much they score in each of the four skills ranging from one to four. The wheel here represents seamanship and is really important during combat. The spyglass represents scouting and is used to find other ships, as well as treasures and hidden islands. The cutlass represents leadership and how well you lead your crew in combat and for recruitment. The chest represents influence and is a measure of the captain's reputation. It helps gain the trust of employers and rumors at the local tavern. All the captain's four skills add up to ten except for Christian and Pepine, who are at nine, but have awesome abilities. Finally, captains have a home port. This is where they keep their treasure chest and where they start the game from. Keep your captain face down for now. A good captain needs a good ship. At the beginning of the game, pick from one of the two starter ships. Choose the sloop for a nimble and fast ship, well suited to piracy. With the flute, you sacrifice speed, but you add space for extra cargo, which is great for a merchant. Take the corresponding color and ship, place five cubes on your player board to match your ship, place your last cube on the zero of the glory track on the main board, take 10 gold pieces and place them here. Shuffle the 70 glory card deck and give one to each player. If you receive one of the 16 specialists, it doesn't join your crew immediately. You first need to recruit him in his port before you can use his special abilities. All the other glory cards will help during the game, most of them during combat, but a lot of others also add nice quirks to the game. Place the main game board in the middle of the table and place the remaining glory cards, captains and ships next to it. Place one merchant ship token face down on each sea zone. Merchant tokens, when flipped, show the potential nation of the merchant ship. Place one demand token face up on each port. These represent goods which are in demand in this port and will be sold here for six gold instead of three. Shuffle the remaining tokens and place them in a pile near the board. 
Also, place one ship modification token face down in each port. Place the ship's special weapons near the enemy space. Also, place the five brown tokens on the leftmost space of the enemy ship. Keep the bounty tokens in four piles, one for each nation near the at-war space. Place the four naval tokens here and place their respective frigate on them. Also place the pirate sloop and pirate frigate here. Keep all remaining ships miniatures nearby, the remaining flutes and sloops, the frigates and the galleons. All players now reveal the captain and the ship they've selected. Move the five cubes on your player board to match your ship. Toughness is for both the hull and the masts. Maneuverability is not a characteristic you mark with a cube. It indicates how agile your ship is and is used to prevent merchant ships from escaping. Finally, place your ship on your home port. Now let's look at the missions and the rumors. Shuffle each deck and place it near the board. Now, both are very useful because they give you glory points once fulfilled. Now, rumors are easier to accomplish than missions. However, they are not always true. For now, reveal the top two mission cards, read the description aloud, and place them on the board. All missions have a requirement which must be met before you can claim it. They also mention what you would earn and also the location where you can claim it. Some missions also require roles before they can be claimed. If the role fails, leave the mission in play. A new attempt can be made during a new port or sea zone action. So, for instance, for the Royal Escort mission, you have to transport the cousin of the Spanish Queen from Caracas to Havana in the next six actions. To claim that mission, you need an influence check and no bounties at all. Once a mission is claimed, put it face up on your player board. Also draw a new one and place it on the board at the location listed on the card. In this example, if you succeed the mission, you gain 20 gold, but if you fail, you receive a Spanish bounty as you are suspected of kidnapping. You can only have one mission at a time. If you want, you can discard the previous mission upon claiming a new one. When you complete a mission, you gain a glory point and a glory card. You also gain a glory point and a glory card when you find out that rumors are true. Since these are easier to accomplish, it's well worth the investment. Rumors are found in taverns as part of port actions. You're basically buying drinks to someone who is telling you tall tales about some wonderful stories across the Caribbean seas. Pay two gold and roll an influence check. On a successful roll, collect your rumor card and place it face down on your player board. Like missions, you can only have one at a time, but you can replace it if you pick a new one. When you reach the destination, roll the required dice. For instance, this one, you need to go to San Juan and roll an influence check. If you fail, the rumor was false after all, and you discard the card. If it's successful, the rumor was true, you can bask in glory, score one point, and collect one glory card. Randomly draw for first place and place the events cards deck near that player. Now let's look at the events cards. They fall into two broad categories. 18 of those bring a new NPC on the board. 12 of those are admirals from either one of the four nations. And six are pirate captains of either a sloop or a frigate. Each has a seamanship, scouting, and leadership value, and that's why they are placed face up. There's only ever one of each in play at a time. The other 16 are actual events. They're also used to move the NPCs, which are already on the board. Five of those are storms, which you should avoid if they are too strong. Four start or end wars between nations. The other seven add a nice flavor to the game, and I'll let you discover them. Finally, we have 64 cargo cards, which are used for trade, but also to resolve merchant raids. There are eight cards for each of the eight goods, cocoa, food, rum, spices, sugar, textiles, tobacco, and wood. They're all the same in terms of gameplay. At the bottom of the card are icons and numbers. Each good has the same amount of gold. Half of them have three gold and then one of each for one, two, four, or five gold. Half of those icons show the location of a damage, and the other half is an escape icon. Finally, give a player aid sheet to everyone. It is extremely useful. It has a summary of pretty much everything in the game. You have the port actions, you have the sea zones, the special weapons, the modifications, combat. So keep it close by. You are now ready to start playing Merchants and Marauders. Watch our next video to learn how to play and get better at the game.